by bite, these majestic and adorable manatees gather by the dozens to chomp on literal tons of fresh romaine lettuce, courtesy of the Florida Wildlife Commission. Since December 16th, when we started this program for this winter, we have now exceeded 280,000 pounds to date. They feed about 170 sea cows three times per day, though some days they fed as few as 70 and as many as 270. FWC says the seagrass the manatees usually eat has been getting choked by harmful algae bloom since 2009. A decline in the water quality within the Indian River Lagoon is what's compromising the seagrasses below and causing the phytoplankton blooms and that water quality impact is likely due to upland runoff from fertilizers, herbicides and potentially septic systems. This is the second year FWC has resorted to feeding the manatees near the FPL plant in Cocoa. Because of the warm water that runs from the power plant, state officials say manatees would naturally gather near this area. They say that made this a logical place to be feeding them. Since the start of the year, FWC says they've seen more than 100 manatee deaths, but they say the feeding program seems to be working. A year or two years ago, we were seeing a lot of animals that had obvious signs of emaciation or being very underweight. So that was generally when we can see it, it's, you know, kind of outlines of bones being um, visible even through the skin. So skull outlines, rib outlines, things like that. Um, we have still had cases like that this winter, but not nearly in the same numbers. FWC has rescued 37 sea cows since the beginning of January and since released 28 of them back to the wild. They say it's too soon to know whether they'll have to feed them again next winter, but it feels good to help. The best thing is seeing an animal that, you know, you helped rescue, and then you're there at the release when it's going back. I mean, there's that that's probably why everyone in this field does this job. In Coco, Matt Trezza, Fox 35 News.